Ibis Tracks HD 3D is composed of the three following workstations. Bullet tracks and brass tracks, which are used for acquiring bullets and cartridge cases, respectively, and match point, where the image analysis takes place. Bullet tracks can be used to automatically acquire damaged and undamaged bullets. When acquiring an undamaged bullet, first mount it in the holder between the rubber collets, and then attach the magnetic holder to the bullet tracks acquisition unit. When you begin your undamaged bullet acquisition, first select the wraparound mode for the entire circumference to be acquired. Advanced repositioning mode is necessary for damaged surfaces, but should not be necessary for pristine surfaces. Using the store shape icon means that the shape will be stored for viewing later on. What you are seeing now is the automated acquisition of an undamaged bullet. This will be a wraparound acquisition where the entire circumference of the base of the bullet will be acquired. During the setup, you want to be sure that the base of the bullet is just inside the right-hand side of the photo area. Right now, we're doing a test spin to ensure that the bullet is centered properly. Once we are happy that it has been well centered, we will set a position and record this as the start area. The system will gauge the quality of the area to make sure it is good. If it passes, then the Start Acquisition button will be enabled and the acquisition can begin. Now the button is available and the acquisition has begun and everything else in the acquisition from this point is fully automated by the Bullet Track software. It will perform the focus and lighting on its own as it rotates beneath the sensor. For the sake of this demonstration, the acquisition time has been accelerated. A typical acquisition time would be 17 minutes for a 9mm bullet. If the diameter is larger, the acquisition will take longer. If the diameter is smaller, the acquisition will take less time. Once the wraparound acquisition has completed, the validation window will open automatically. Inside the validation screen, the user should ensure that the anchor line placement is properly aligned at the top and bottom shoulder for the land engraved area. Once you are happy with the angle and positioning, you can move on to the next one in the set. Repeat the process for all the available land engraved areas on the bullet surface. Once all anchor lines are placed correctly, the user can validate the acquisition and it will be stored in the database. Once your acquisition is completed, it is sent to the match point where a correlation search is launched. When the results are returned, you can choose the best placed exhibit, as we've done here, and bring it up for a side-by-side -side comparison. For these two bullets, we're going to look at them in the shape mode and adjust this image so we can see it with depth grayscale detail. Depth grayscale is a mode unique to IBIS that assigns a shade of gray to every pixel in the image, from absolute black to absolute white. Lower details appear darker and higher relief information is whiter. This makes surface detail appear bold and readily apparent to the user. In this case, we can bring the test exhibit to the left so that we can do a hairline comparison of the two. For a better view, we can also zoom in. Now we can see how clearly these gross features line up. Okay, so for the damaged bullet, what we're going to do is mount the bullet so that the uh, dash in the blue stub cuts through the midpoint of the region I'm going to acquire. Now from the top view, that looks straight, but from the side view, I want to make sure that it's flat, and it does look quite flat here. You can even use that shaft at the back as a guide to see what horizontal is. So it's straight from the top, it's flat from the side, it's ready to be acquired. When acquiring a damaged bullet, the region selection should be made. This is because there is less than 100% of the bullet circumference to acquire, so just partial regions will be done. The user should then go to the start position of where they expect the acquisition to begin and set this as the beginning area. Once it is properly aligned, the system will validate the positioning and accept it as the start position. With the top position accepted, the user can now advance to the lower area to set where the acquisition will end. In this case, the damaged bullet will have an acquisition that encompasses two land engraved areas. 
Here, the focus will be regained and the position will be slightly adjusted and the user will then set this as the end position so that the system can validate for quality. Once both positions have been set, the user can begin the acquisition. Once the acquisition begins, the system will spend the first few minutes calculating the actual rotation angle to be used so it knows how much to advance along the damaged surface. With the rotation angle calculated, the true acquisition of the surface can begin. Once the acquisition is completed, the validation window will automatically open. Inside the validation window, the user should set the anchor lines correctly once again, just like it was done for the test fire acquisition. Both the positioning and angle of the anchor lines need to be fine-tuned to respect what is on the bullet surface. Then the numbering of the land impressions can begin. This is done on the top of the screen by right-clicking on the dotted line and selecting Lee 1. Here you can see on the side, the actual original shape of the damaged surface is available for experts to work with. Once you are completed, validate the acquisition and it is memorized. Comparisons can also be done between damaged exhibits. In the Correlation Request screen, we will pull up the first place candidate. As it appears on screen, you will notice that on the left there are partial acquisitions. There is only a single area here where there is matching information between the land engraved areas. What we're doing now is increasing the 3D, which will let the surface details react to our virtual side light. Much like on the comparison microscope, you can make adjustments to the shadows on screen so that each and every firearms examiner can personalize the level of detail so that they can see their preferred view using dynamic real-time adjustments. And that makes it easier for experts to decide if there is enough common information between the two exhibits that it's worthwhile to bring the evidence into the lab and do a comparison under the comparison microscope. When acquiring the ejector mark, the ejector mark should be located at 3 o'clock on the head of the cartridge case. Align the mark so it is positioned between the red lines on the screen and then trace a line around the circumference of the shape. This is done firstly with the 6 o'clock side light and then done with the 3 o'clock side light. Once you click save, the lighting and focus is set automatically by the system. It is important to eliminate washout from the shape so that bright white areas are not acquired. Focus will remain the same from the first photo, only the lighting needs to be automatically adjusted. By default, it will continue with the 3D acquisition. This is done by taking a series of photographs being taken with different light angles and then merging all the images together into a final view. Once the ejector is completed, it will center on the primer. With some fine tuning, you want to make sure that the parallel lines on the surface are made horizontal. Then press the continue button and the acquisition proceeds automatically. The focus, lighting and centering are all done by the system. The hands-on time for the user is less than two minutes. The remaining acquisition is automated and takes less than five minutes. This is time the user can spend doing other tasks. Automated images are taken by the system using a ring light, a side light, and with a diffuser in place for the 3D images. There are also automated acquisitions of the firing pin impression, as well as imaging of the whole cartridge case head, which can be used for orientation. Once all the images have been taken, the validation screen will automatically open so the user can perform a quality check on all the captured images. The nine images just acquired should be looked over to ensure they have optimal quality with regard to lighting, focus, and ring positioning. If changes need to be made, they can be done here, or if need be, images can be deleted and reacquired. Once all the images have been viewed, they can be accepted and the acquisition is complete.
With the acquisition completed, the cartridge case is ejected from the brass tracks unit and another can be inserted for another acquisition. Comparisons for cartridge cases begin with the same correlation results list. However, when images are brought up to be viewed, they're displayed in the cartridge case mode. Here we can see two well-marked Glock primers, which are shown in depth grayscale view, similar to how we saw the bullets earlier. You can apply a metallic texture and have the cartridge case surface react to lighting in real time, much like it would under a comparison microscope. This optimizes the level of detail between exhibits and gives complete control to the firearms examiner who is working on the comparison. Here's another comparison between two cartridge cases. Again, we are choosing the first place candidates, also Glock exhibits. You can see there is some fine detail in 2D. But as we go to depth grayscale, more information becomes available. And if we give it a copper color, it becomes even more dynamic to work with. As you can see here, the surface details are reacting to the side light like they would under a comparison microscope. Once we line up the exhibits, we will turn on a feature called the hairline profile meter. This tool turns the yellow hairline into a sensor that shows us the cross-section of the reference and test exhibits as they overlap, exactly where the hairline is located. The reference exhibit is represented with the green line, and the test exhibit is shown with the red line. On the right of your screen, you can see how much agreement there is between the peaks and valleys of each exhibit. This concludes our video demonstration of the brass tracks and bullet tracks acquisition units, as well as the match point analysis station. If you have additional questions, please contact us at www.ultra-forensictechnology.com.